Hey guys, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Nikon D850 to shoot video. Now, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do it. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set it up for 4K. Make sure to stay tuned at the end of the video because I'm going to have a bunch of sample footage and test shots using these exact settings. Now, let's get into the menus. The first thing that we're going to want to do is obviously turn it on, and then we're going to switch from photo to video mode. Then we can go into our menu setting on the side, and then we can skip over playback, photo shooting menu, and we'll go to the movie shooting menu. Now, if you haven't already, you can just reset these so we're starting at the same point. And then we're going to go to file naming. Now, in here, you can set this up to be whatever you want. I'm just going to have it be my initials. Hit OK. Then we can go down to the destination. Now, in here, there's two different options. There's the XQD card slot and SD card slot. I have two cards in here, so you're going to be able to see both of them, and the XQD card is a larger memory size, so that's why you see the difference in duration, so 6 hours and 17 minutes and 2 hours and 4 minutes, respectively. I can fit more time on the XQD card slot, so I'm going to go with that one. Let's hit set, and then we're going to go down to image area. In here, there's two different options. There's the FX and DX mode. FX means that it's using the full sensor, and this is a full frame camera. And then the DX means it's going to be using a crop on that sensor. So if you have like a 35 millimeter on it, it'll be closer to like a 56 or something like that with a 1.5 crop on it. Now for how I want to set it up, I want to use the full sensor. So I'm going to leave it in the FX mode and I'll just click that. And then we can go down to the frame size and frame rate. Now you'll notice there's a ton of different options in here. There's a bunch of 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. And then you have these 3840 by 2160. That's the 4K or ultra HD. And then if you go down a little bit more, you get your 720 and then your 1920 by 1080 slow motion modes. So you have three options, one for 30p, 25p, and 24p. I will shoot some sample stuff of these, but I'm not going to get into these right now. I'm going to set it up for the 4K 24p recording mode. Now you'll notice we got movie quality and that is grayed out now. When you're shooting in 4K, that is the highest quality, so it's automatically defaulted to high. Then the movie file type, we have two file types in here. We have MOV, which is QuickTime, and then MP4. MOV is a less compressed codec, so that's going to be better for editing if you're going to do a lot of post-processing on it later. The MP4 is going to be smaller file sizes, so if you don't have a ton of cards with you or you're not going to be doing a ton of editing, then MP4 should work fine for you. I'm going to stick with the MOV. Then we have the ISO sensitivity settings. This is for setting up the auto ISO, which I'm not going to be using because I'm going to be having all my settings in full manual mode. Then we have our white balance. It defaults to auto, but I want to have control over that. So I'm going to choose the color temperature and then I'll adjust that depending on which scene I'm in. Next, we have the picture control. Now this is going to be the same as the photo settings. So some of these will have a higher saturation or higher contrast or higher sharpness and basically all of those same ones that come over from the photo side. So I'm just going to go down and there is a flat profile in here. That's going to give me the most dynamic range when I'm shooting and that's what I want for grading in post later. But if you're not going to be grading in post, you might just want to stick with a standard or neutral profile. Next we have manage picture control and this is going to be if you're customizing it, which I'm not going to be doing, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Active delighting is grayed out. And then we have the high ISO noise reduction. This defaults to normal. I usually like to turn this off and if I'm going to do any noise reduction, I'm going to do it in post. But if you don't have a computer that can process that or you don't want to have to deal with it later, I would leave it on low or normal. I definitely wouldn't put it on high because that's going to soften up your image quite a bit. Then we have the flicker reduction. This is on auto. I'll just leave that there. Basically, if you have fluorescent lights, sometimes you get a flicker pattern on the sensor and what this will do is compensate for that so you won't see it as much with fluorescent type lights. Then we have some audio settings. We have microphone sensitivity. It's defaulted to auto. I'm just going to switch it to manual and then I want to make sure that it's bouncing right around 12. Now again, this is using the internal mic and normally I would switch over and use an external mic just to get some better quality audio. Set that. We have the attenuator. I'm just going to leave that off. Then we have the frequency response, which is kind of a neat little feature. There's two options in here. There's wide range and vocal range, meaning that it's going to have a narrower band of frequency pickup to pick up just vocals. Or if you're doing wide, then you're going to pick up all the other sounds around you as well. I'm just going to leave it on wide. And then we have a wind noise reduction. I'm going to leave this off. But again, if you're outside, you might want to turn that on if you're in a windy area. But I like to use an external audio like this lav right here. It just gives you a better sounding audio. 
Then there's two options that are grayed out. First is the electronic VR, and this only works if you're in full HD or 1920 by 1080. Basically what this mode will do is compensate for camera movement to get you a smoother shot. Then you have the time-lapse movie mode, and what this does is create a 4K time-lapse that will export into a QuickTime movie so you don't have to worry about putting it together in post on your own. And those are all the camera settings for the movie shooting mode. Now we're gonna go out and use these exact settings and get some awesome footage, and I'll show that to you guys right now. Hope you guys enjoyed that footage. I had a lot of fun shooting on the Nikon D850, checking out some cool video features. If you guys wanna try this lens out, head on over to lensprotogo.com. And if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe for new videos every week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.